and we're going to define and talk a little bit about the electric field. Uh, so, so far we've talked about electric force uh, and one of the things we did was we calculated electric force due to a point charge. And so this gives us Coulomb's law here uh, and again this is a vector which makes it uh, tricky sometimes. So a typical calculation that we did last time was say for instance we had some charge QB and we wanted to find the force that QB applies to QA. So we would take our new equation uh, and again when we're doing this I sort of think about we're just finding the absolute value. So I don't plug in any signs or anything. We put in the two charges. So here's the 5 times 10 to the negative 6. Here's the 3 times 10 to the negative 6. We divide by the distance squared and we get that the force is about 6 newtons. And of course, since we know these are both positive charges, the direction would be in the way we've drawn it here straight down for the force. Uh, so that's what we did last time. And so now what happens if we replace this charge? So say we take this charge that we're trying to find the force on and replace it with a charge of negative 5 times 10 to the negative 6. So a picture kind of like this. And so now I have that same QB and now we're applying our force on a different charge. But we do everything sort of the same. All right. And so here now my two charges are both 5 times 10 to the 6. Again, I sort of just neglect that negative sign in here since I'm only worried about the uh, absolute value. I get a, an answer of about 10 newtons. And of course in this case the force is going to be attractive. Uh, so it's not that different than the first case uh, as far as you know calculating it. It's pretty much the same amount of work. Uh, so the force comes out to be bigger and is in a different direction. But the question is can we make this easier? And so we're going to define what's called the electric field uh, and what this does is it gives us a way to describe the force a charge will apply to some other generic charge. All right, and so once we know the electric field of a charged object, we can determine the force it'll apply on objects very quickly. So it'll save us time, and also, uh, maybe more importantly, it's going to give us a very useful way to think about the electric force, which is kind of a weird thing. All right, and so here's a, an example of what I mean. So here, if we have that charge QB we've been dealing with, okay, this point down here, uh, if I can find what's called the electric field, all right, and so the field is basically this charge causes a field in the area around it, and so the field in the area around it is going to have some strength, and so I'm going to find at that point, okay, uh, yeah, the electric field has some sort of strength. All right, and then once we know that, when I place a charge there, it'll be very easy to calculate the force from this. So in fact, the equation that we're going to do is the force, again being a vector, is just going to be Q, or in this case it would be QA, so the force that we place there, times the electric field at that point. Okay, and so this is how we calculate uh, that uh, force from the electric field. So there's another way to kind of think about that. So every charged object can make or will make an electric field in the space around it. And this field describes the force that this, uh, uh, this charge exerts on other charged objects. Uh, so a little typo here. This should be charge. Just write that in real quick. Um, and so basically the charge causes a field, which then that field applies the force on another charge. And so it's kind of a different way to think about it. Uh, and so this field that's given off gives, it gives rise to the electric force a particle will feel when it's in that field. Uh, and the electric field is set up such that a point charge with a charge Q0 will feel a force like this. And so if some point charge Q sub 0, so if I put some charge Q sub 0 in a region where there's an electric field, the force that's going to feel comes from this equation here. And so the electric field, one way to think about it is it's force per charge. Um, and so here's these equations blown up a little bit. Uh, now the direction, the electric field is a vector, so it has a magnitude and a direction. Uh, and the electric field points in the same direction as the force of positive charge would feel at that position. Uh, the units, and so we can see from right here, right, electric field uh, is force divided by charge. So for units, uh, force units are newtons, charge is coulomb. So one way to write that will be newtons per coulomb. We'll find some other ways to write it too. And here's a, a picture of a representation of the electric field. So this is the electric field uh, due to a negative point charge. And so the electric field is basically a collection of uh, numbers or vectors rather. So at every point in space there's a vector that tells you the electric field. And so you can think about it like a little arrow. And so like at this point in space here uh, there's an arrow. Now it's pointed 
towards the negative charge because again the electric field points in the direction that a positive charge would feel a force. So if I put a positive charge right here, it's going to feel a force towards right, uh, the negative charge. And you can see that as the points get further away over here, the size of that arrow gets smaller. Even, uh, you know, like for instance, this one right here, which is just a little bit further than this guy, the arrow is smaller. And so that's a representation of an electric field. So let's try an example. So here we have a particle with charge negative 4 microcoulombs is placed at a point with an electric field of 20 newtons per coulomb uh, and this electric field points in the eastward direction, what force does it feel? So pause this and give this a try. All right, I got choice C. So let's go through this. So I think for me at least the actual number isn't too hard to calculate. All right, once you know the electric field, all right, you take the charge. Now again, since we're doing the absolute value here, I don't worry about that it's a negative. I use the negative when I'm trying to find the direction. And so it's 4 times 10 to the negative 6 times 20. I get 8 times 10 to the negative 5th newtons. And then the direction, okay, the force would be in the westward direction. Why? Well, the electric field points in the east direction. And since it's a negative charge, all right, the negative charge is going to feel an opposite force to what the positive would have felt. So a positive would have felt a force uh, in the east, but a negative charge is going to feel that force in the west. Uh, and so if we know the E field, uh, it's not too tricky to find uh, the force from it for on, a, on a point charge. Um, now one more definition. This is the electric field due to a point charge. And this looks real similar uh, to our calculations that we did for the Coulomb's law. All right, so it's the same K constant Q R squared. All right, and so uh, the rules are if Q is positive, the electric field points outward. If Q is negative, the electric field points inward. And so the kind of things that we'll do is we'll be given a charge. So here we're given a positive charge, and I want to find the electric field. Generally, I'll be asked to find it at some point P. All right, and so I would do this equation. So basically, I would find the distance between them. That's the R, just like we did last time. And that would be in here. The charge, I would plug in there. That special constant, that would give me the electric field at that point. For the sign, uh, or for the direction, rather, it points uh, outward if it's a positive charge and inward if it's a negative charge. So again, if you imagine if there was a positive charge right here, all right, the electric field points in the direction that the force uh, that, that, that that positive charge would feel. And so since this is positive here, it's going to feel a force outwards. Now, on the other side, if it was a negative charge and I was trying to find the electric field uh, on some, again, at that point, I would imagine that there's a positive charge and that positive charge would be attracted uh, to that negative charge. And so that's how you would calculate the electric field at some point. You use this equation again here to find its magnitude and then you use these two rules here uh, to figure out which way that vector is pointing. All right, so now we're going to go through uh, an example problem, something you could see on a test. And so here we have uh, two point charges, one positive microcoulombs and one negative microcoulombs, and they're arranged in this, in this, as in this little diagram here. Uh, and so our first question is, what direction is the electric field at point P? So uh, stop, pause, and think about this for a second, and let us know what you think. Okay. Uh, I got pointing to the right, and so here's how I thought about it. So the electric field from the two uh, Marco Coulomb is going to point something kind of like this. Okay, so I'll call this the electric field from the positive charge. Uh, the one from the negative is going to point something kind of like this. If you can sort of imagine that my line is straight there, that's the one from the negative charge. And so what's going to happen is like we've, we've sort of seen this sort of picture before, all right, there's going to be these uh, vectors like this. The up and the down part's going to cancel, and these two are going to add together uh, to point to the right. Now typically, uh, on a test or a problem, the next question will be this. What is the magnitude of the electric field at point P? So if you want, give that one a try, and then we'll go through this and show you how to calculate it. Okay, uh, so when I did this, I got the answer 5, about 5.1 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. And so let's go through and do this. Uh, so a couple things. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the electric field. Now, the electric field from our charge, again, I'm finding just the absolute value of it. So it's that K constant times the Q. Well, the Q in both cases is 2 microcoulombs. So I'll put that in. And so the R, well, that's our first thing we've got to 
to sort of think about. So here's this distance here. That's what we're trying to find. That's our distance of R. And so what I do is I set up a little triangle here. And so this distance here is going to be 0 0.5 meters. And so this R is going to be the square root of 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.5 squared. And when I did that, all right, uh, you can ch test me on this, I got about 0 0.7 uh, meters for that, so about 0 0.7. And so down here, I'll put that 0 0.7, it's actually 0 0.707, so I'll keep some extra digits um, squared. Okay, so that's the electric field, and it'll be the magnitude of the electric field for both of the charges. And so when I calculated this, uh, the number I got is about 3.6 uh, times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. Now the tricky part, and so this is the electric field from both of these, but it's just the magnitude. We've got to think about the direction. And if we look at sort of blow up this point P, we're going to have these, that we drew last time, these two electric fields kind of pointing like this. And so each one has the same magnitude. I'll call it that E like we were talking about. Um, and what it is is we really only care about what we might call the x component of this. The y component, this guy, is just going to cancel out. And so if we think about this as having some theta, this x component is going to be E times cosine of our angle. Well, what's really nice is this triangle is one of our nicest triangles. It's just 45 degrees since the x and the y are exactly the same. So it's E cosine of 45 degrees gives us our x component. So this would be our x component of the electric field. And then the last thing we got to do is realize that there's two of those. There's one from uh, the upstairs electric field, this guy, and then one from this guy. So there's two of them. So our total electric field at that point is going to be 2 times my electric field times cosine 45. And so again, this is, we talked about, this is using vectors. This is where this gets a little bit tricky. Uh, but when we're all said and done, it's 2 times our electric field, which is the 3.6 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb times cosine 45. And like I said, when I did this, I got about 5.1 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb.